So when gambar saya dengan YB Syed Syadid keluar kat social media, orang ingat YB nak perkenalkan tunang ke or you know girlfriend but it's actually not. Saya pergi jumpa Syed Syadid untuk minta pertolongan atas saya punya IC. After years of campaigning by civil society, the government is in the process of amending the federal constitution to grant citizenship to children born overseas to Malaysian mothers. However, the government's proposed amendments include unexpected changes that have sparked concerns. There are several categories of children who are going to suffer a great deal because of these amendments. And I think that's heartless. We try to um, assist stateless person acquisition towards citizenship. And the law is what we have. And when the law itself is being amended for worse, it definitely shakes the entire ecosystem that we have. If the proposed amendments is passed, I think we as stateless have no hopes. I work as a crew cafe at Bukit Bintang. I seek work from a lot of places. They say, oh, cannot. Um, at least you need to have green card. That time there is a person, she helped me because she knows my conditions. She said, it's okay, I pay you, will you work with me? Akasha was born in Malaysia to a Malaysian father and Indonesian mother. Since her parents' marriage was only registered overseas and her mother abandoned the family, Akasha is stateless. I have Younger brother, he's scared of the outside world and he's scared because he's stateless too. And I need to like support him. And actually I'm also scared to get sick very, very much because we cannot go to hospitals. As a stateless, we can go to clinic, but we need money, like maybe expensive. Even though I just trying to buy my own SIM card, I just want to go to Jalan Jalan, everything is like, forbidden things to do. The stellar is being like, you're a ghost. It's not a ghost that people can't see, but people can see you. Development of Human Resources for Rural Areas, or DRA, has identified over 16,000 stateless individuals in peninsular Malaysia alone. DRA worked to assist individuals in acquiring Malaysian citizenship. I think broadly people assume just having a Malaysian parent is enough for you to get automatic citizenship, but that's not the case. Akansha's father and her mother did not legally register their marriage. And because of that, and in accordance to Section 17 of the Federal Constitution, a child that is born out of legal wedlock to a Malaysian father cannot automatically acquire the father's citizenship. Throughout the world, there's only two countries that practices this discriminatory law, which does not allow a child to acquire a citizenship because the status of being born out of wedlock, and uh, that's Malaysia and Barbados. There is another provision that addresses this loophole by allowing anyone born in Malaysia without citizenship in another country to become a Malaysian citizen automatically, but it is not being implemented forcing people like Wong Kueng Hui to fight through the court. The law does allow the minister considerable discretion. The only problem is this. This discretion is exercised in such a way that people have to wait decades, not two or three years, decades between 2017 and 2021. Only six to eight percent applications for registration and naturalization were successful. So that means 90 plus percent of the applications were unsuccessful. So the law is there. The minister or the ministry can um, embrace these victimized, helpless people, but they do not do it. In the process of proposing a constitutional amendment to allow children born overseas to Malaysian mothers to acquire citizenship, the government is also proposing that Section 1E is changed from by operation of law to by registration. The government would have control over approving your citizenship. While on automatic, they can't say no to you. As long as you qualify, you can get a citizenship. However, if it's by registration, even if you do have a complete set and the right set of documents and etc., you don't necessarily will get approval. This is just one of the proposed amendments that threatens to make statelessness in Malaysia worse. When KDN's research team actually conducted the Taklimat, uh, we knew five particular objections um, that we were not happy. 
We approached the Ministry of Home Affairs of Malaysia for comment, but they stated they were unavailable during the production period. News reports show that the government identified the amendments, quote, based on findings through research analysis, engagement sessions, comparative studies of other countries' legislation, as well as discussions in cabinet committee meetings and the technical committee. KDN has also stated that they aim to clear the backlog of citizenship applications. They say they have received 150,000 applications and aim to process at least 10,000 this year. Meanwhile, for stateless individuals like Melissa, the challenges are constant. Polis tahan lah, dia tanya, dari mana cik? Uh, dari syuting. So orang macam tak percaya, faham tak? <laughs> and then kita explain and then dia kata, oh ok, uh, nak IC? So I kena cakap, oh, I tak ada IC. So then boleh tak ada IC? So I bagi surat beranak. The same thing all over again. And then polis tu last house kata, mm, tak apalah cik. Ok, just go back lah. <laughs> that is lucky. If it's not lucky, then they would ask for money. It's actually very hurtful for me lah because I'm a Malaysian citizen by rights, but no one would trust. Recently, I got offered to act in a drama, 40 episode, dekat Sarawak. And I tak boleh pergi. So, I had to turn down. So, banyak kali macam kalau nak shoot kat mana-mana je lah, diorang confirm night flight. I tak ada IC. Night flight macam mana? Hmm, good girl ni. Good girl ni. So, I hope that this amendment is not that cruel. I hope so because it's not like we don't have ambitions, we don't have a goal. I have a dream when I was a kid. Yeah, I want to be police. Um, oh. But now, all those things that we've been dreamed of, is fading away. Cita-cita kami sebagai seorang stateless adalah untuk menjadi rakyat Malaysia. Malaysia is our place. Malaysia is our country actually. We born here, we raised here. We dah familiar dah dengan culture dekat Malaysia. So, where else we want to go? It's our parents' fault. Don't continue punish us for things that we didn't do. There's no need to adopt the attitude that, look, this is a whole package deal, take it or leave it. Malaysian mothers giving birth abroad cannot pass their citizenship to their kids. Yes, I think that's a very beautiful aspect of the amendment procedures, that mothers and fathers will hopefully now be treated on par. I think we should go ahead with these right away. But the other amendments, we need to have democratic consultation with affected interests and civic-minded citizens, and Parliament must play a greater role by appointing a special committee of Parliament to examine these uh, proposals. If I get to be a Malaysian, first thing I want to open my bank account, a uh, license, because I want to drive a motorcycle, I want to drive a car, I want to find a job, I want to do all actually, and I want to buy my own SIM card with my own IC, I don't have that. Can I borrow your IC to buy my, my SIM card? And I'm, no, I want to buy my own SIM cards, even though it's not a big thing to others, but this thing is meaningful, it's, it's like we come back to life again 